All right, you guys, so uh, this is going to be kind of a short and sweet one, hopefully. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a quick update on uh, what the next couple months are going to look like for me. Um, I just saw my orthopedist today, and uh, he was actually the orthopedist assistant, and we went over uh, my MRI scans and all that, and what uh, he thinks is going on, and it's really interesting to me that this is like... I want to say the third or fourth orthopedist I've been to, lots of doctors I've seen for this. Um, we've run the gambit and uh, the I've gotten really four different answers from four different doctors um, as far as what they think is going on. And um, so, yes, the meniscus tear does show on the MRI, but they don't think that's the cause of my symptoms. They actually think it's because my uh, uh, synovial membranes are or sex are very, very inflamed. And so they're gonna be talking about doing a partial uh, synovial um, biopsy and uh, kind of trimming that down a little bit to kind of calm it down. Um, and what that's gonna be, and they're planning on doing like some stitching of the uh, meniscus and shaving, but they won't know which th uh, treatments they're gonna do until they're in the middle of the surgery and deciding kind of on the fly what's gonna happen, what's not. Um, and so it'll be kind of, need-based as they go along, uh, which is kind of a scary proposition for me. Um, but what that means is depending on what they do, if it's just, uh, you know, shaving down the meniscus a little bit and whatnot, then I might be, you know, pretty close to back to normal uh, within a couple days. Um, if they do the stitching, then I can't put any weight on it for four weeks. Um, if they do, when they do the synovial uh, trimming and whatnot, then that will be another kind of long-term uh, recovery. So, you know, uh, that's going to be about a month away. Um, and then I'll be pretty much down and out for about a month where I can't put any load on my leg. So that's what that's what's going on with me. Um, the next thing is, uh, if you didn't catch it uh, yesterday, I did put up a video um, that was actually very personal to me and, I, and kind of vulnerable to me. And it's one of the reasons why I didn't share it to the group is also because it's, uh, just gay related, not wrestling related, and not fitness related, but it had to do with uh, sexuality and Christianity and whatnot with me growing up as a Christian, now being agnostic. And um, yeah. Um, and if you did catch the comments section beforehand, uh, there was one person that was very insane that replied pretty much immediately at, oh my God. Um, second person, uh, I actually really appreciated his uh, comments and I uh, left them on the channel, but uh, I didn't think that the other person was representing anything very well themselves or the religion. So, um, you know, watch that if you are finding that you are struggling with your identity, sexuality, and religion, because I, I think that uh, it might be helpful for you to hear what I have to say on that. Uh, moving on, um, I wanted to talk about the uh, ethics of personal training via video, um, via the internet, um, and kind of a, a lot of these trends as we're moving into the next, uh, you know, iteration of what it looks like for uh, uh, phys fitness health. and. Uh, one of, you know, I, this comes up because I was responding to somebody in a meat fighters group about, uh, doing training over video and I would, you know, I was planning on like helping them like kind of look at their programming, seeing ways that they can, uh, change it up, uh, different movements that they can be using, find out what their holes are in the programming and then, you know, at least point them in the right direction. Um, things could, uh, get a little bit of a gray area and, and it's, uh, I don't, like online programming. Uh, I actually don't tend to like any programming that I find on the internet, honestly. Um, a lot of these programs, especially when they say, okay, I'm gonna do 100 push-ups every day for a month, um, there's no scientific evidence to suggest that that is a good idea. In fact, there's quite a bit that suggests that that's a very bad idea um, from developing developing scar tissue and whatnot over the long term, you're not going to see the gains that you want to see. You have to give your muscles time to recover. Again, it's like if you were to take a knife and cut yourself on the arm every day for a month and see how uh, nice of a scar that you develop there is. Um, you might develop a scar, you might cut all the way through, through your flesh to your bone. You know, it's, it's one of those things that every time you work out, you're causing injury to the muscle and you have to give it time to recover. Um, online programs, a lot of times they're very generalized and you also don't know what the person is valuing. And that's one of the things that is really uh, difficult for me, especially, you know, as I've mentioned, like I've 
been watching quite a bit of Sean Mel Giovanni and, uh, you know, I've watched Jeff Cavalier for uh, Athlete X for years. Um, I think that both of them give very good instruction on uh, how to perform exercise as well. Um, and I've actually learned a lot from them, but there are also areas that I disagree with them on. And one of the things is specifically for uh, Sean Mel Giovanni is that a lot of uh, the advice that he gives is very, very focused on more kind of bodybuilding rather than the entire plethora of options that you have when it comes to training your body. And, uh, the, you know, there's a lot of things that he has put on the stamp of disapproval on um, where I don't feel like he uh, knows what the fuck he's talking about. Um, so, you know, especially when it comes to, like, stability training, I know that things have gotten really, really crazy with TikTok and things like that where people are, you know, um, you know doing pull-ups with with a chain holding a, uh, a bench press bench to their bodies and they're using that as weight is the bench press bench and they're doing things that are just completely unstable that look like cir circus acts. Um, when I talk about stability training, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, and there is a place for that, and I've talked about that quite a bit, that especially in the early stages of training, you want to teach your muscles how to stabilize. However, when you get very, very advanced and when hypertrophy or um, strength gains are really, really your focus, um, stability training doesn't have as much of a, of a place. I don't think that you should be you know, bench pressing 100 pound dumbbells with your shoulders on a physio ball, right? That's not going to help you put on muscle faster. In the early stages, there is definitely a place for that when you are actually really trying to teach your muscles and your, your joints how to stabilize. But when you get into like really, really heavy weights, there becomes a very serious safety issue that comes along with that. So, um, you know, I think that context matters and a lot of times uh, his discussions lacks that context. Um, either because that's just not the world that he lives in um, or that, um, you know, it's it's not something that he values or maybe he doesn't understand what people are talking about or he's responding to these extreme circumstances without putting in the context that there actually is an appropriate place for that. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of take everything, including what you see on this channel, um, with a little bit of a grain of salt because there's going to be context with everything depending on what you're trying to do. And so when you go onto bodybuilding.com or any number of websites and you just download any random program that you're getting off the internet, um, first of all, there's been no evaluation that's been done to you. So nobody, you don't know what kind of muscle imbalances or uh, things that are going on in your body that you don't know how to address um, or that you may not know what that's going on. And so there really does, in my opinion, need to be an assessment stage with that. I've uh, been a personal trainer for over 10 years. Um, I do physical assessments with all my clients. Pretty much every session that we do, they just don't know that I'm doing it. Um, and ongoing issues are things that I am constantly trying to resolve. And that's where a lot of my hesitation about doing online training comes from, is that when I am uh, training you in person, I'm gonna be walking around you the whole time. I'm gonna be looking at how your hips are stabilizing if you're doing a bench press, how your shoulders are stabilized, and whether or not there's a gap uh, between your low back and the bench when you're doing certain exercises. Um, you know. I can actually see exactly where the bar is going towards on your chest. I can see where how level your arms are. So just from that exercise alone, um, it, I found, uh, because I am training uh, a friend digitally right now over the internet. He's in San Francisco. I'm in Tacoma. Um, and I am struggling, honestly, to really, really notice every little detail that I would normally notice in person. And that creates a very big risk for injury. Now, this is a friend that I trained for six months in person in my home uh, when he was living here. And so I actually do know what was going on with his body. And so I, I've got more of a feel for what I can actually push him to, through and generally an idea of what's going on in his body. Um, whereas if I was, if I've never seen you in person, um, there's going to be things that I miss. When you do a, a squat assessment, um, I'm going to be taking views from your back and I'm going to start at your feet. I'm going to look at your knees. I'm going to look at your hips. I'm going to look at your spine. I'm going to look at your shoulders. I'm looking all the way up to the connect chain. And then I'm going to do the same thing from the side. And sometimes I'll even do it from the front. I don't really... Um, NASM does actually emphasize, you know, doing uh, front assessments. I don't find that that's the best view to see pretty much anything. Um, most of the things that I can see 
from the front, I can see from the back, and it's actually a lot more telling on the back side. Um, and the same thing's gonna be true for uh, a deadlift, for example. Um, the amount of uh, spinal flexion that is required in order to damage the low back uh, when you are doing a deadlift is actually very, very uh, subtle. And like, it is that, right? You may be able to see it because of my, uh, my elbow is dropping, but really if you just look at where my fists are touching, right, it's, it's really not very far um, in order to create some level of back strain. And I can't see your back very well through a camera, maybe because you didn't set up your cell phone that you're live streaming from in a very great angle, um, which is not any fault of your own, but um, you know, I may find, oh shit, I need to move in order to see what I need to see in order to keep you safe. And so, um, and also when it comes to uh, exercise, you, for certain types of goals, you're going to need some level of progressive overload. That means that you're going to need a spotter. You're going to need somebody there that's going to catch you when you're pushing yourself too hard to actually move the weight uh, yourself anymore. Uh, and if I'm not there to catch the weight, then you can get hurt there too. So there are a lot of holes in, um, that, in the training process that I don't have control with and I'm just not comfortable with that. And so, yes, um, I'm happy to talk to you about your nutrition. I am happy to talk to you about, um, you know, what your programming looks like. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, I would rather you have, uh, you know, a knowledgeable, um, you know, training partner, somebody that can spot you well, uh, somebody that uh, is trained uh, like a personal trainer to guide you and to keep you safe. Um, and you're just not going to get that over Zoom. It's just not going to happen. Um, I can think, see, see myself like, you know, telling people to get a Sheldon Cooper robot that just moves around and I'm just floating on a tablet and it's just my face there. And, I'm, and then I can actually ch check your angles and all that. Mm -hmm. But, um, even then, that's going to be a difficult, impractical thing to do. Um, so, you know, there are more obvious things that you can see in a basic assessment that um, I would be happy to start in it, and I'd be able to tell, okay, your hips are definitely shifting to one side or the other. You've got a knee valgus on one side. Um, you've got, you know, your shoulders are rising. Um, when it's, you know, extreme enough, I'm going to be able to see that. And then I can actually cue you based on that. But when it comes to, um, you know, trying to do a day-to-day -day assessment and understanding, you know, okay, I'm, uh, and this is actually what's happening with my friend in San Francisco right now is he's having some anterior pain on certain exercises um, in his shoulder here. And um, I can't, you know, walk up to him and check his internal external rotation from multiple positions, see what, uh, if there's a mobility thing going on there, finding out if there's an impingement, feel the joint to see if there's some popping that shouldn't be there. Uh, things like that, that you just cannot uh, do over Zoom. So, um, you know, and I know that, you know, certain trainers or most trainers are on a certain level where, you know, they're still taking everybody around to machines and they're not, you know, going to be at the same level that I am as far as uh, corrective exercise goes or things like that. But, um, you know, because I'm at that level um, and because trainers are expensive, I, I have an anxiety around that where I feel that I have to be worth the time, the money that you are spending for your training session. And so therefore I'm gonna commit myself to you um, probably more than most trainers would. Um, and so that means that I want to make sure that you're gonna stay injury free. That means that I want to have good eyes on you. So that's why I kind of have the hesitation around doing online training. Um, and um, you know, I think that really, if you're not, sitting down and having a conversation with somebody one-on-one uh, -on -one to uh, express what your goals are um, and how to get there, then you're not going to get, you know, quality advice anyways. Again, that's one reason that I don't recommend going and doing a pamphlet workout that somebody just hands out to you and, you know, whatnot. Um, you know, there's a lot of factors, a lot of factors that go into it that um, I want to make sure that uh, you're getting the proper care that you should be getting. So um, that's my two cents on the subject. I will uh, probably do another video on Friday. Um, I do have one that I, I have been meaning to do for a while, um, but it's another sensitive topic. So um, I, I've done several takes and it's just 
walking on that eggshell, so I've got to be careful. So um, I'll talk to you guys soon. You have a good one. Um, and when I disappear for a month in a month or two, um, don't worry too much about it. It's just that I'm recovering. Okay? All right. Be safe, guys. Bye.